In today's video, I'm going to share with you my latest blood work results. I'm Jenny. I've been doing a carnivore diet experiment since December 2022 and tracking my progress through weight, measurements, DEXA scans, continuous glucose monitoring, blood work, arterial scans, and so much more. And I've been sharing all of that data with you here on YouTube. I get all my blood work from ownyourlabs.com. They are super, super easy to use. You just head over to the website and you pick out whatever tests you want, kind of like you're on Amazon, add it to your cart, and then you check check out, pay with a credit card, good to go. After you complete your order, you're going to get an email within one business day, and that is going to be your blood work order. You're going to print out this blood work order and bring it to your nearest LabCorp location. I like to make appointments ahead of time, but you can also just do a walk-in. You don't have to pay anything at LabCorp that's already built in, it's baked in to the price of the blood test on Own Your Labs. Within a few days, you'll have your results in the LabCorp portal, and it really couldn't be any easier. You can order your own blood work in 45 out of the 50 states in the United States. So most people can do this for themselves. So if you are fighting your doctor to get a fasting insulin, or if you want to do a NMR lipo profile or something that your doctor has no idea what the heck you're talking about, this is a great option for you. This is also a great option if you like to run fun experiments on yourself like I do. I do have a discount code. It's Jenny Midditch. You can get 10% off with that code and that is not an affiliate link. I just believe in the work that Own Your Labs is doing and I want to to support them. So be sure to use that code and save some money if you'd like to get blood work for yourself. Let's go into my latest blood work. We're gonna start off with a comprehensive metabolic panel. And honestly, it's boring because all of the numbers are within range. My fasting glucose this time around was 86. My BUN, creatinine, EGFR, my bun to creatinine ratio, all of my electrolytes, my kidney numbers, AST, ALT, they're all within range and they're actually almost exactly the same as they were the last time I tested at the end of May. So everything is looking good there. I wanna move on next to my A1C. And this time around my A1C is 5.5. Last time it was 5.3. So let's talk about that a little bit. I wear a continuous glucose monitor. I calibrate the continuous glucose monitor by doing finger sticks. So I'm very acquainted with my blood glucose numbers. My average is 85 uh, overall. So an A1C of 5.5 would indicate that I have much higher blood glucose than I do. So a lot of people get worried about this on carnivore. There is a theory out there um, by some of the leading scientists that our blood cells are living longer when you're on carnivore. And when your blood cell is alive longer, it has more time to collect glucose molecules. So it's not that you actually have an A1C and elevated blood glucose levels. It's just that your red blood cells are healthier. And for me personally, I'm taking blood every month. So I have seen my A1C anywhere between a 5.1 to a 5.7. Um, this is not something I'm super worried about just because I've been doing you know, blood work for a year and a half now, and this is just normal for me. And I know that my blood glucose levels are much lower than what this A1C would indicate. So that's kind of a good reason why, you know, maybe having a CGM and getting really acquainted with your blood glucose levels could be uh, an option for you. Maybe it'll just give you a little bit more data. Let's move next to my vitamin D. D. It is down 39.8. It was 50.6. And I know exactly why this happened. I was not outside very much this summer. I had a family member that was in the hospital and I spent about a month in the hospital with them as a caregiver. So I didn't get a lot of sun. And I also had stopped supplementing with my vitamin D supplements. So... I really don't want to, but I think I'm gonna start taking vitamin D again, along with K2 and magnesium because they all work together. And then I have been getting out in the sun more, you know, now that summer's almost over. We've still had some beautiful days, but I have been trying to get more sun on my skin. So I'll take that test again next month and see if I've, you know, moved it up at all. Your electrolytes can get all out of whack when you stop eating carbohydrates. You're going to be losing a lot of water weight and with water go electrolytes. So you need to be replacing those. The brand that I use is Element. They are the sponsor of today's video. Because when you're early on in carnivore and you're experiencing keto flu symptoms, having electrolytes on hand can help you feel better quickly. 
I always recommend taking one packet of the raw unflavored element first thing in the morning, even if you're not feeling any keto flu symptoms. And then you can drink several more packets throughout the day as needed. They come in these convenient packets, which are great when you're traveling and they contain 1000 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium and 60 milligrams of magnesium. Right now, Element is offering my viewers a free sample pack with any order. So you can head to the link in the description. It's drinkelement.com slash Jenny Midditch. That's D-R-I-N-K-L-M-N-T dot com slash Jenny Midditch and get your free sample pack with any order today. And that is for the packets. It's also for their new sparkling water cans. The next test I wanna talk about is my fasting insulin. This is another great indicator of your true insulin resistance if you have any or if you're insulin sensitive. You want your insulin to be between two and six. That is ideal. Mine is 5.8. So that paired with my fasting glucose of 86, paired with all of my continuous glucose monitor data, things like that, that's just another indicator to me that I am doing great. The next test is a new test for me. I actually learned about this at the Symposium for Metabolic Health, and this test is called methylmalonic acid. You can test this to see if you are deficient in B12, and it will show you very very early deficiencies. So this is a little bit of a pricey test, but I wanted to give it a shot to see if perhaps I have a B12 deficiency because I have an MTRR gene mutation, which means that my body doesn't methylate B vitamins very well. And whenever I test B12 and folate, it's within range, but with the amount of red meat that I'm eating, I feel like it should be a little higher. So I wanted to test my methylmalonic acid and see if I'm deficient. And my number came back at a 50 seven, which is low. The way that you know if you are deficient in B12 is if your methylmalonic acid is high, you can then also look at your homocysteine. If your homocysteine is elevated and your methylmalonic acid, those together are both excellent indicators that you have an early B12 deficiency and that you need to be supplementing with B12 and or eating more red meat. So for anybody out there that is vegan or vegetarian, um, I would recommend doing the methylmalonic acid test along with the homocysteine just to make sure that you are not B12 deficient because that will occur over time. It just takes a while. And if you catch it early enough, you can supplement with a high quality methylated B vitamin, you like uh, methylcobalamin and then you can stop that deficiency because that can be a devastating deficiency. So that was a very interesting test, but a little bit pricier. I think it was like $93. I'll put it in the description below. Finally, I wanted to talk about my standard lipid panel this time around. I ran a little bit of an experiment because I wanted to show you how easy it is to manipulate your cholesterol numbers. Your cholesterol numbers don't exist in a vacuum. They are constantly going up and down. And I think the most important thing to look for on a cholesterol panel is first your triglycerides. You want those to be under 100. And then you look at your HDL cholesterol. You want that to be above 50. Your LDL cholesterol could be all over the place and it depends on so many different factors. But I just wanted to show you this panel because I was able to drop my LDL cholesterol intentionally by about 23%. So this time around, my total cholesterol was 250. My triglycerides were 53, my HDL cholesterol 94, and my LDL cholesterol 148, which some people might be like, oh my God, 148, that's still really high. That's very low for me. I am a lean mass hyper responder, which means that I, on a ketogenic diet, I see my LDL cholesterol number skyrocket, my HDL cholesterol number skyrocket as well, but I have very low triglycerides. So a 148 for me is incredibly low. My average is between 190 and 270 for LDL cholesterol. But how was I able to do that? Well, if you check out this video right here, I go into what I did, how it works, and talk a little bit about the lipid energy model and lean mass hyperresponder. So be sure to check out this video next. If you wanna order any of these tests for yourself, I have put a link in the description to ownyourlabs.com along with that discount code so you can get 10% off. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I make these videos for you and I want to answer your questions. So with that, I'll see you in the next video.